coordinator for the club. Uh, but what many of you don't know about me is I'm also an experienced long distance backpacker. Uh, so I hiked the Pacific Crest Trail in 2016 and the Arizona Trail in 2018. So cumulatively I have about 3,500 miles of through hiking experience. Uh, so I figured during the quarantine uh, due to the COVID-19 uh, uh, pandemic, uh, we're inside, uh, working from home, offices are closed, schools and trips are canceled. So even though we can't be together, what we can do is we can go through all of our gear and um, I'm going to walk you through the stuff that I take on a through hike and hopefully this helps you plan. Uh, whether it be for an upcoming uh, shorter trip with the back, our backpacking section this summer or an, if you're planning a longer distance hike down the road. So without further ado, let's get started. First thing I've got here is my trekking poles. These don't really go in my pack, but I do carry them with me, but, so I thought them important to mention. Next thing would be the pack itself. This, full disclaimer, is not the pack I took on my through hikes. Uh, this is the pack I took on my through hikes. This is the Osprey Atmos. Really love this pack. The main reason I switched out uh, was just to save weight. This one's a lot lighter. This is the Gossamer Gear Gorilla. It's a 40 liter pack uh, and it's just the right size for me. Uh, first thing I've got here, let's talk about water. I actually don't carry an algae normally. I, uh, I carry disposable smart water bottles and then I just reuse them. They're a lot lighter um, than the algae uh, and I found and they also are compatible with my filtration system. So I use a Sawyer Squeeze uh, for filtering my water. Uh, and this is my water bladder. This is what I use to collect the dirty water. So altogether, I, my capacity is around four liters, but if I do need more, I can always buy another smart water bottle in town uh, and I'll have that. Um, so next, Let's go with, uh, this is my pack towel. This is pretty much just for wiping snot when it's cold and sweat when it's hot. Uh, and it, that just sits right on my shoulder strap here on my pack. The other things I have here, some sunglasses, really important in addition to my sun hat, uh, hat with a brim and my sun shirt. This is my compass, one of the 10 essentials. Can't leave home without it. In my pockets here, we've got my cell phone. Uh, basically, I'm not making phone calls on the trail. It's on airplane mode most of the time, but I do use my cell phone for GPS. Uh, there's some helpful apps for through hiking, uh, and I use it for entertainment, music, audiobooks, podcasts, etc. Uh, map, this will basically cover the section that I'm covering that day. The rest of my maps will be in a waterproof bag in my pack, but this sits, sits in my pocket so it's really easy to access. Headphones so I can listen to that music as I hike. Uh, they'll be careful in rattlesnake country. You don't want to have headphones in uh, when you accidentally step on a rattler. Uh, this is my wallet, super lightweight little Cuban fiber wallet. Um, basically the only thing that goes in here is a credit card, a debit card, my ID, and a little bit of cash. Uh, don't need your library card while you're on your through hike. Uh, in my other hip belt pocket, I have my headlamp. Uh, this is the Petzl E-Lite, super lightweight, minimal really small. Uh, it's powered by a watch battery, uh, so I'll usually just carry an extra one of those in my pack as well. Um, next up I have a little bit of sunscreen, also really important to keeping the sun off. You don't need, I recommend transferring your sunscreen into a tiny bottle like this. Uh, it's a lot lighter weight. This is basically all I need for about five days. Uh, chapstick, snacks, uh, and I also have this little Leatherman multi-tool. This is the smallest little guy I can find. It's got scissors, it's got a knife, it's got tweezers, uh, and it's got a bottle opener for uh, opening those cold beers once you do get into town. So basically all the essentials in that little multi-tool. Uh, on the front of my pack here, uh, this rag, it's clean at the moment. This is my pee rag. That's about all I'm going to say about that. Ladies, you know, really don't want to carry a ton of toilet paper, so this is a really good solution for not having to pack out all that trash and toilet paper. I have a couple extra safety pins out on the pack to pin clothes, socks, 
um, stuff that I need to dry as I'm hiking uh, so they're in the sun. I have TP uh, and my little Deuce of Spades trowel right there. Um, I have my rain jacket. Uh, so this is the uh, Outdoor Reach Research Helium rain jacket. Uh, really lightweight. I'll carry a heavier one in or Oregon, Washington. Might carry like an Arcteryx uh, really heavy duty rain jacket if I know I'm going to be poured on all the time. But that's the beautiful thing is you can switch out your gear as you need to. Uh, rain skirt. Uh, basically, I used to use rain pants to protect my legs from the rain, but found I got overheated. The rain skirt's really nice because it allows for airflow. Uh, you can layer it. it um, also, it's a lot easier to put on and off. What else we got in here? We have uh, gloves, just really thin pair of lightweight liner gloves, um, as well as some uh, rain mints. I think this is Mountain Laurel Designs. Yeah, so waterproof rain mints. If your gloves get wet, your fingers are going to be cold and it's no fun. So really recommend the waterproof rain mitts to wear under, weighs like an ounce. So really not that big of an addition uh, for a lot of added benefit. Next I have my food bag. Uh, so this is a Z-Pax uh, Cuban Fiber food bag. Basically can fit a lot of food up in here. I can fit up to five days of food in here. Um, and then I'll usually store some snacks on the outside as well. In the food bag I also have my uh, long spoon, really helpful for scraping food out of the bottom of your cook pot. Um, this is what I use as my tent footprint, it's just a plastic sheet. I've used Tyvek, uh, I don't recommend buying uh, the footprint that goes with your tent, only because it is usually more, a lot more expensive and it weighs a lot more. So go with the cheap route works just as well at protecting your gear. Uh, this is my tent. Uh, this is the Big Agnes Fly Creek UL2 two person. Um, I really love this tent. It's come up with me on both the PCT and the Arizona Trail. Highly recommend it. Uh, I went with the two person uh, just so I have a little bit extra room. Steaks. This is exactly the amount I need. No more, no less. In my hip belt pocket, I usually also carry a tiny bottle of hand sanitizer. Could not find that at the moment. I'm sure you can understand why. Uh, next up is my cook system. So I have a fuel canister. Usually I'll carry something a little bit smaller uh, than that one, but that's what I have on hand. Uh, this is my Tokes cook pot. Really small and lightweight. And inside I have my MSR pocket rocket stove. Um, as well as a lighter and a, a little uh, bandana to clean out that stove. And that's held together with a little rubber band rather than the stuff sack it came with. I don't use a ton of stuff sacks, but the one thing I do find it useful for is storing my clothes and making sure that I'm able to keep them nice and dry. Uh, in here I have a puppy. This is my insulated layer. Uh, this is a Patagonia down puffy. Uh, I really recommend having an insulating layer of sorts, um, whether it's down, synthetic, whatever works for you. Then I always have an extra pair of socks. These socks, usually I'm wearing one pair hiking and one pair that I can switch back and forth as I clean them. Uh, these are usually pinned to the outside of my pack drying uh, while I'm hiking in the other ones. So keep your socks clean. Also, I highly recommend these toe socks. Um, they're, uh, what is it, in Jinji. Uh, I hope I'm saying that right, but I've really found toe socks help prevent against blisters. You don't have skin rubbing against skin and dirt inside your shoe. Instead, you're a little bit more protected with the toe socks. Next is my buff, CMC buff. Uh, really awesome piece of gear. I don't really wear a beanie because my hair is in a ponytail most of the time, but this I found whether it's keeping my neck warm or my ears warmer. Uh, really versatile piece of gear that I love. Um, next up, my Patagonia Houdini wind pants. So this is something I added to my system just because it's a few ounces. Uh, and when you wake up in the morning, it's really cold. Most of the time I'm in my 
Nike running shorts for hiking, but first thing in the morning it's a little too cold for shorts. So what I love about these is I'll put them on and then uh, the bottoms snap off so I can slip them right over my shoes uh, and take them off once it gets warm enough to do so. And then I'll just stuff them in my pack right there. Uh, also, if the weather gets gnarly, you can wear the wind pants with the rain skirt over it and you'll be a lot more protected than if you're just in shorts. Um, next is my sleeping, part of my sleep system is my uh, Patagonia uh, base layer pants, uh, really lightweight, and then my smart wool base layer top. Uh, a lot of hikers will sleep in their clothes. I've found I like to have something dry to change into uh, when the rest of my clothes are soaking wet. It makes me feel a little bit more comfortable at camp, so that's a little bit of a luxury I'm willing to sacrifice. Uh, smart wool socks. These do not come out for hiking. These are only for sleeping, so I always have a dry, warm pair of socks to put on at the end of the day. Also keeps my dirty hiker feet from touching the inside of my nice, clean sleeping bag. Next up, we got my pillow. Uh, another luxury item, I, some might say. A lot of people stuff a stuff sack with their clothes, and that will be their pillow, but uh, I found that when you're trying to cover 20-25 miles a day, a good night's sleep is imperative and this has helped me achieve that. Next up is my little ditty bags. This is basically all my toiletries. I have a little first aid kit with just the bare minimal essentials uh, for taking care of like blisters, wounds. I have a little bit of medical tape, a little bit of gear repair stuff in there. Um, I have a toothbrush, toothpaste, a little bit of hand soap, hairbrush, an extra lighter uh, in this waterproof bag, um, and the uh, dental floss, which also serves as thread in a, in a pinch for gear repair. Uh, also, what the, this, all this stuff is in, m favorite piece of gear is the Ziploc bag, or any brand really, this is great value. But uh, you can see all your contents, it's waterproof, it's lightweight, and it's cheap. So, highly recommend the Ziploc. Uh, in this Ziploc, I have my electronics. So I mentioned my phone and my headphones earlier. I also carry a battery bank. This is uh, what I use to keep my phone charged on the trail. I get about three and a half charges out of this one, which is the, really the sweet spot for me since I'm not usually out for more than five days at a time. Uh, if that. Uh, I have a charging cable for my phone as well as the charging cable to charge the battery bank when I'm in town. Um, and then I also have a uh, wall adapter. So um, this has dual ports. I highly recommend that just because it's helpful to be charging your battery bank and your phone at the same time. You get in town, you get out of town as quickly as you can. Next up, I have my sleeping pad. I've used a foam pad in the past. Highly recommend it for areas like deserts where you have things constantly poking and prodding and trying to destroy your gear. Uh, but the, the inflatable pads are a lot more comfortable. This is the, uh, I think, the Thermarest Neo Air x -Lite. Um So it's a little bit lighter than the foam pad and also, um, Actually, I guess it's about the same weight as the foam pad, but it's just a lot more comfortable. And as I said, a good night's sleep is really important to me. So I've decided it's worth the risk and I take the measures to protect the pad. Um, last up, we have uh, my sleeping bag. So this is a Western Mountaineering Alpen Light, which I love, love, love this bag. It's a little bit heavier than what you really need. It's a 20 degree bag. I recommend going for something around 30 uh, degrees, um, but I've loved this bag. Uh, definitely go for down. Synthetic's a little bit too heavy for a through hike. Uh, and then to keep all my gear dry, I basically have this pack liner. So that just lines my whole pack and everything that needs to stay dry goes in that. So there you have it. That is all the gear that I take on a through hike. Um, let me know in the comments below if you have any questions on anything I mentioned or if you'd like me to talk about more through hiking things. Um, we're going to be stuck inside for a while and there's plenty more I can talk about. We can go into depth on some of my 
uh, assistance here if you want to learn more about specific gear or we can talk about food on the trail or how to plan a through hike. Until then I hope everybody's staying safe, healthy and I'll see you on the trail.